In this scene, we're taking a look at the different field modes. We'll learn the important distinction between direction, speed, and velocity. We'll use the XP console to analyze our particles and understand how the fields are affecting our particles. Then we'll go through each of the modes, direction, velocity, and acceleration, and understand how each of those affects our particles. So let's jump in. All right, so here we are in Cinema 4D, and we're taking a look at the field modes of the XP flow field object. So if I make sure our flow field object is selected in this system, we can see that it's been set up to be a, an, a long spline flow mode which means that it's gonna follow along a spline. Its, its vectors are generated from a spline. And that spline is the helix spline here in the object manager, and you can see it in the viewport as well. And you can see those vectors are generated along the spline, like so. Uh, we've got the fall off currently active. I'm actually gonna turn that off. I've just had it on to be able to see this display, but I want it to be uh, universal. So it, it applies these vectors everywhere. And then I'm actually going to turn off the displaying of the vectors. So display tab, show vectors, just so I can see this nice and clearly. If I go back to the general tab, we can see the field mode is set to direction. And this is what we're interested in here. So I'm going to press play. And we can see our particles are moving along the spline. So if I rotate the camera around, you can see it's a helix spline. And they're spiraling nicely there. So let's go back to a side view. And what's going on here is our vectors that have been generated by our XP flow field are only imparting direction to the particles. So the particles are moving, but they are only moving at the speed that they have been given by the emitter itself at birth. So let's click on that XP emitter. And we can see that the speed is 150. Now, if I change that speed to say 500, which is a lot faster, of course, we'll see them moving along the spline much quicker, but they are all moving at the same rate. We could do this so it has some variation. So I could go back down to say 200 and give it a variation of 100. So anywhere between 100 and 300 speed, particle speed. And you'll see some move slower along the spline and some move faster, but they are still following the direction of the spline. And that's exactly what direction field mode does. It gives the particles a direction, but not a speed. And we can actually verify this by using a handy feature of X particles. And that is if we go into X particles menu here and it's the XP console. So if I grab that and put it up here, and then if I frame up so I can still see our simulation on the left hand side here, and I'm gonna click on our emitter. I'm gonna hit get active emitter. Now by default, this XP console will just show you the particle ID and the age. I wanna to go to the options tab and I want to see the direction uh, I can turn the age one off, and I also want to see the speed. And I'm actually going to have it update every frame, so it's real time. There we go, and we'll see when we come back to this, this tab, particle data, we now have an x, y, z direction, of the vector split into its, its constituent parts, x, y, and z, and the speed you can see here as well. So if I go back to zero variation, and I go back and play again, you'll see the speed is exactly 200, but the direction is changing. And you can see the direction is changing as they're moving along the spline. Okay, so now if I add some variation back in, so back to 100, we'll see values between 100 and 300, and it won't be anywhere outside of that range. Okay, so we've taken a look at the direction field mode. And now we're going to take a look at the velocity mode. So if I activate velocity field mode by just selecting it from the drop down, we'll notice that this speed parameter becomes unlocked and it's set to default at 200. Now if I press play, we'll see that our speed of all of our particles is exactly 200. And if I go back to our emitter, and you can see we've actually still got the variation settings set here, and I could even go and set these both to zero, so the speed of the particles coming in is zero press play, and then we see that the speed is being given by the XP flow field as well. And velocity is simply direction and speed together. So it's the, the XP flow field is actually giving the particles both the direction and the speed now. So we can, we can test that out. We can change this to 300, and you'll see there we have 
the speed set to exactly 300. So that's really useful when you need it to follow exact shapes or following along different surfaces and that kind of thing. And you need to dictate the, the exact speed of the particles and not have any other input for the speed or any other drivers of the speed. Now we can't talk about field modes without also addressing the strength parameter, the strength slider here. Now currently it's set to 100, which means that it will change the rate of the direction and speed of the particle at a rate of 100%. So it's immediately applying this uh, flow to the, to the particles. So if I drop the strength down to 10%, you'll see that it takes much, much longer to reach that 300 speed. And you can see in the real time updating of the XP console, if I go through a bit slower and I pause at a few moments, at this point, they've only reached two, 276 units. Now, if I nudge the first frame, you'll see it's hit 30 already, and that's 10% of our 300 speed. And that's only one frame, of course. So it's applied 10% of our speed to the particle. And then so on, it'll continue until it reaches its full 300. Now, if I go back to the emitter, the starting speed has an effect here, of course. So if I change this to 500 or even 600, and then I go back to here and the strength is set to 10%, the particles will actually start out much faster. So they'll actually start at a higher speed than the 300 and they'll come back down. So as the rate of the flow field is applied, the particles eventually reach this uh, steady state of 300 units per second. And that's the same with the direction as well. So this is how long until they will settle into their directions along that spline. But of course, if they've moved away from the, the spline quite significantly, they're obviously not going to come and return to it. So usually you need a decent amount of strength and you'll see that's enough to keep them moving along the spline. So the last field mode we're going to take a look at is acceleration. And there's a better way to demonstrate acceleration in the flow field. So I'm actually going to deactivate this system. Let's hide it. Let's reveal our other system here, which is called field acceleration. And let's open it up so we can see what's involved. Let's zoom out and we can see that it's an elongated uh, flow field and it's set to default mode. So if I select it, we can see that it's set to flow mode default. And that just means that all of the vectors are facing in Z plus. So all the particles are going to be moving in that direction. If I check the emitter itself, I've set that to a zero speed. And then let's jump back to the flow field itself. And we can see the field mode is in acceleration and the acceleration is 50 units. Now, let me just associate this console with this particular emitter. So get the active emitter and let's hit play and we'll see our particle uh, data updating. So we saw our particles move very fast and then exited the flow field. Now, if I go frame by frame, we'll see what's happening here. And I'll select the, uh, the flow field just whilst we're doing this. So if I nudge just one frame, so we're on the first frame, you'll see that the speed value is 50. And the acceleration value is, of course, 50 units. Now, if this was just applying velocity, just applying the speed, we wouldn't change from this point. But because this is acceleration, it's going to add this value every single frame. So you'll see I nudge it along another frame, we get double that, we get another 50 units, and so on. So each frame I nudge along, we're adding another 50 units to the speed value of the particles until they reach this point, which is the last few frames. So I click that one. And it's, its last influence was this frame where it was given an extra 50 units and, it, and it's 2,250 2, units. And then beyond this point, there is no change in the speed because of course the particles have now left the flow field itself. Now to compare, we can actually set the field mode back to velocity. And if we just hit play, we'll see that the speed is 200 and it's constant. So the feel, the velocity is applied to the particles and there is no change in that unless we animated this speed value. So we could change this speed value whilst the particles are in the field and it will update. As you can see on the console, we can see the speed changing to whatever value I set it to. Let's reset those parameters. I'll do that to 200 and let's go back to frame zero. 
Okay, so now that we've gone over the basics of each of the field modes, we're going to take a look at another scene which has some more specific examples of when to use which field mode. Okay, so here we are in that scene and we have our three specific examples of our field modes, direction, velocity and acceleration. So firstly, let's take a look at the direction system here. And we have an emitter that's in uh, a circle and it's actually emitting in ring mode, which means it'll only emit on the edges. So that outer perimeter. If I go to the emission tab, they have a speed of 150 units per second. And then if I go to the flow field, we can see that that is set to a uh, flow mode of two spline instead of a long spline in the previous scene. And the field mode is set, of course, to direction. The strength is at 5%, so that's quite a gentle influence changing the direction uh, at, a, at a pretty steady rate. Um, and then, of course, we've got this flower shape spline as our, as our source object. We also have this XP speed in here. And the XP speed is going to decelerate our particles uh, each frame. And what, that, what that's going to demonstrate to us is that direction mode in the XP flow field, the, the field mode of direction, is really useful for when you are driving the particle speed elsewhere, whether that be from the initial emitter, assigning them a speed, so 150 in this case, or whether it be from another modifier. So in this particular case, the speed is being controlled by this speed modifier. So let's get back up to the flow field and actually let's play and see what happens. So you can see here the particles are emitted around the ring. They're given a direction towards the, towards the spline. So all the vectors are pointing towards the spline. And because it's quite gentle, you end up with this really nice looking structure. Now the color there is white because the particles are now at zero speed. They're clamped at zero speed. And if we go to the display tab of our emitter, you can see I've set it to gradient parameter. Gradient parameter mode is speed, and then the minimum is zero and the maximum is 150. So red there, 150, all the way down to zero, which is white. So you can see here that we are driving the particle speed independent of the XP flow field object, and the XP flow field object is only giving the particles a direction. There are, of course, many, many uses for these different particular field modes, but these, this scenario is a common one. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one, which is velocity, of course. So we'll minimize this, deactivate it and hide it. Go back to frame zero and let's take a look at our velocity system. Now I'm gonna reactivate this, but I actually had a lot of stuff turned off just because I wanted to bring it back online individually as I, as I explained the scene. And you can see here, we've got this geometry here, this mesh named female head. And of course it is a female head. And if I, Hit NB so we can see the wireframe. You can see you've got this nice flowing topology. And we have this XP flow field. If I activate that, you can see that we have this flow field set to surface tangent, and the object for that surface tangent is the head geometry. Uh, the field mode is set to velocity with a speed of 50 and a strength of 100, so it's a high rate. If we take a look at the display tab, turn on the vectors again, go back to the general tab, and if we hit the fall off on, you can see that the, the velocity vectors or the vectors of the flow field are pointing along and flowing along the surface tangents. That'll become more apparent when we play the timeline, of course. So the other things we have, we have an emitter. I'm emitting particles over her whole head, over the whole geometry uh, using polygon area. And then if I go down here, we've got this follow surface and the follow surface is telling the particles to adhere or, or follow along the female head surface as well. And then I've got a trail object to help us visualize everything. Okay, so first off, if I actually deactivate our flow field and I hit play, you'll see our particles are moving across the surface and their initial direction is generated by the female head normals. And you can see it's kind of crisscrossing all over the place. And that's an interesting look, and that might be what you're after. In that case, you wouldn't need a flow field. But for, for our purpose, we're, we're demonstrating the flow field, and we get some really interesting looks. So I'm activating the flow field. I'm going to hit play, and you can see we get this really beautiful flow of particles moving across the surface. 
Now, the reason velocity is useful here and in this type of scenario is that it's giving the particles their speed, regardless of the emitter's initial speed. We are controlling it all from within the flow field. So we don't even have to look at the speed on the emitter. We know that we are going to dictate the particle speed. So if I make this 200 and I hit play, you'll see it, it covers the, the mesh much quicker, but the particles are at an absolute speed of 200. And if I drop it down to say 30 instead of 50, we again know that the particle speed is going to be 30 when the strength value is at 100%. So a good time to use velocity is when you want the particles to all move in unison across a surface and generally that tends to maintain shapes better. So it tends to reveal topology better. It tends to follow splines better as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the last one, which is acceleration. And we've only seen this in a very simple form. So let's reactivate everything here. Uh, we only use the default mode in the other scene. And let me zoom out here. And you can see we've got a much larger flow field and if I select that flow field now it's set to target mode and it's targeting this null here so I've got this null here we've got our flow field it's a very large flow field 2000 cubic and if I go to the display tab show our vectors and I'm actually going to go to the general tab and just for demonstration purposes I'm going to really increase this, the uh, cell size and you can see here our vectors in our cells for our flow field are all pointing towards our null. So essentially it's creating a flow which targets whatever the input is in this field. In this case, it's the target null. So let's go back to a finer cell size of 40 and let's hide those vectors. Now, if we check out the emitter itself, we can see that it is a sphere. It's firing them out uh, in a normal direction, which is away from the center, essentially, in this scenario. And we've got a trail object. So if I hit play, you'll see the particles uh, move out from the emitter, and then they start to accelerate towards the null. And because they kind of came out at different angles and different speeds, or sorry, the same speed, it meant that the acceleration kind of creates this orbiting. So it's very much like a gravitational force. And that's where acceleration is the best for when you want to use it. It's best for natural phenomena, things like acceleration, something that starts from zero and, and suddenly moves is kind of unnatural. So acceleration is a really good force to use or, or good field mode to use when you want things to look natural. And you can see we kind of created a sort of a somewhat of a flocking system here. And I could actually move this target around. I could animate this target. Obviously, if the particles leave the, uh, the flow field, they're not coming back. We could, of course, expand the flow field. So let's go, let's do that. Make a larger flow field and <clears throat> move our particles across here. But because they're accelerating, they might escape. They might get to a, a too high a velocity. What's happening here is the particles are accelerating towards the null. And as they get past it, because of the, the ve vectors obviously change direction, they are getting slowed down. So they end up orbiting in this kind of stable state. Whereas if I move them too far away, they're going to accelerate so fast that they're going to leave the, the bounds of our flow field here. So you want to keep it in this area here like so. Now what happens if I change this flow field to a direction or velocity mode? Well, if I change it to direction, you'll see the particles just simply go towards the null. They go towards the center. They're following those vectors and then they end up in a stable state where all of the velocity vectors are at an equilibrium and they remain in one position. Same with velocity. They'll just move directly towards, but this time they'll move towards at this defined speed of 200. Okay, so acceleration is really good for natural looking forces, especially sort of space uh, objects and, uh, and natural phenomena like rain and, and things that fall out the sky.